morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Why are you being so weird? <laughs> He's been being weird all day. Yeah. So one thing, I'm going to share the story because this was hysterical this morning. I've been laughing about it all morning. <laughs> so the thing you need to know about me is I am a very quick waker upper. I go from completely asleep to completely awake instantaneously. And I'm ready to have conversations and, you know, engage and whatever. I think that comes from growing up um, on, you know, on a farm and on a ranch where you had to be awake very quickly. Cause Cows are loose. Let's go. Things happen and you had to go out and deal with them. So I have always been a person who wakes up really quickly. Russ, on the other hand, needs about an hour. Let me give you an example. Since it's Halloween just passed, I'm like, the, you know, the skeleton trying to dig his way out of the grave in the morning. <laughs> it takes him a long time. So this morning, last night, he forgot to move his laundry into the, um, into the dryer. So oh. he, he gets up this morning and he, sa he says to me, I hope that my, my laundry is dry, um, my sweats are dry because I don't have anything to wear to the gym. So he comes downstairs and then he comes back upstairs. And I say, oh, no, no luck. He goes, no, I guess I have to wear these other sweats that I don't like, blah, blah, whatever. And so he puts them on and he walks away and I say, well, what about the sweats that you, and I talked to him about a different pair of sweats. And he goes, no, these are fine. So then he walks away again. And then I say, did you check the weather? But he didn't hear what I said. And so he comes back in and he goes, this is a lot more conversation than I wanted to have about sweats this morning. <laughs> and for whatever reason, that made me laugh hysterically, mostly because I know that conversation in the morning for him doesn't really work. But it just made me laugh. He was like, I can't have a conversation. Way too about much. Sweats. I was going, no. And it made me giggle. Because I know that about him. <laughs> but anyway, so that was hysterical. This so this week, what did we talk to you about? On Monday, we talked to you a little bit about um, our we went to the National Harbor down in DC and we, we ate out while we were down there. And I did what I recommend that you guys do. I looked for restaurants and then I went to their contact page on their websites. And I emailed them and I said, hey, we're vegan, we're coming down, what options do you have for us? And uh, they, they, a couple of them emailed me back. So one emailed me back and said, here's a bunch of options, it was a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. And another one called me and said, um, not very many options. So we went out to a Mexican place and it was, it was good. We were very fortunate that their beans didn't have lard in them because a right. lot of Mexican places put lard in their beans and this one didn't. So we were able to have rice and beans and a couple Which, of other things. As I said, that would have been good for me right there. Maybe I would have had a salad and rice and beans. I had this big old bowl of rice and beans. I would have been happy. But instead he had a pepperoni pepper with uh, quinoa in it. Which was not bad either. No, it wasn't bad. Right. It wasn't bad. And then I told you about a book that we listened to on the way up and back called If Our Bodies Could Talk. It is not um, really a health book so much as it is just... Um, a book about things like, you know, why we sneeze and why we yeah, yawn. It's, it's not a book for the faint at heart, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, I listened to it again some yesterday, and it is interesting, um, but if you're looking for health information, this isn't it. No. If you want to, you know, win a health section on Jeopardy, right. this is the Or book. if you want to go through life constantly scratching yourself, it's probably a good book to listen you to. You just didn't like the itching section. <laughs> it had a whole section about itching and why we itch, and, you know, you find yourself doing this as you're listening to it. <laughs> So, um, interesting data, but not, not health related. And we're not getting comments today, so hopefully they will come on here eventually. Right. Um, unless you want to try and look for them. Yeah, I, I didn't see any, but I'll try no. again. No, all right. So then, um, on Tuesday, let me put this down. I don't have enough room because we have almonds and raisins here. On Tuesday, we talked to you about serving sizes, and that's because a lot of people who, when they first switched to being plant-based, the feedback we get is, I'm always hungry. And what I tell them is, that's because you're not eating enough. And be, because most people have spent so much of their life in the portion control space, when they switch to plant-based, um, eat, just eating enough volume is hard for them because they're still stuck in that, I can't eat too much food. So we talked about serving sizes being um, one medium sized piece of fruit or a half a cup of cooked fruit or four ounces of juice. Of course, we don't recommend juice, juice but that's yeah. a serving size. And that you should get three or more serving sizes of fruit. Legumes, the serving size is about half a cup of cooked beans or four ounces of to tofu or tempeh. So definitely, we always recommend you get at least a cup of beans a day. And you should eat at least two servings a day of legumes of some kinds or right. some kind or another. So um, I don't know if we always get a whole cup worth well, every I mean, day, but we do eat beans When we have day. hummus in the house, I definitely do. Yeah. I eat a lot of hummus. And, yeah. I and need to make more, don't I? You do. We're out. He forgets to tell me that he finishes it, and then he's like, we don't have any hummus. And I'm like, well, you didn't tell me it was gone. 
so then I don't make any more. And grains, whole grains is another one that people worry about because they worry about the carbs. Five servings of whole grains a day, a half a cup um, is, is considered a serving. So definitely wise. And then vegetables, it says that vegetables is one cup raw, half cup cooked, and four or more a day. I always tell people eat as many vegetables as you want. Right. Um, they are high density in nutrition and low density in calories. So. And this is this this committee. This is their minimum recommendation. This is not like you know max mm -hmm. out of this. It's like if you get to here, you're good. But if you're going over, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we told you a little bit on um, Wednesday about that we've been eating beets lately and how it's been making us feel better in the gym. I actually because we were out of beets this morning, I was drinking beet juice before we left. I had about six ounces of beet juice, and Russ said, ah, I see you. Yeah, she's, she's, she's trying to bring in a ringer here. Trying to bring in the ringer. And I did, had a really good workout. I was on the rower, I felt really good. Um, did a couple extra exercises. So um, those of you who watch us know, I just started using the row machine last week. And today I did 5,500 meters. So mm -hmm. I'm not in all together, I did. And that's the row machine. Because she said to me this morning about row, and I thought she said road. And so I'm thinking, when are you on a bicycle? <laughs> No, so I did uh, 200, uh, 2,000 meters, and then I did uh, some other exercises, and then I did um, 1,000 meters, and then I did um, another 2,000, and then I did um, mm. 500. So I broke it up. I didn't do 5,500 straight. Although it's interesting because on the rower, when I'm actually rowing, I don't feel winded. I don't feel burned out. I don't have um, lactic acid buildup, and I think that's because each stroke has a rest period in it, and so that helps. Also, because I have uh, been a swimmer, um, I, I have that rhythmic breathing pattern that I've used, so I use that, and I think that helps. But when I get done, like when I stop, I realize, wow, I'm really, <laughs> really tired. Yeah. So I guess comments aren't working, or there aren't any. There aren't any, but yeah, so, but that's fine. All right, so anyway, beats are really good for you as far as your cardiovascular and whatever, and we talked about that um, on Wednesday. And then yesterday, we, we talked to you about the four big myths. Yep, hey, there we go. There Good we have morning. one from Illinois. Good morning, Good Sheila. Morning, it's nice Sheila. to see you. Thank you for saying hi, unless yes. no comments are actually working. Right. Um, we told you about four big um, myths or lies that people believe in the health space that hold them back from being as healthy as they could. And we uh, gave you some ways to get around them and whatever. But um, one of them is that be eating healthy is confusing. It's not. not. The science is very clear. The mm -hmm. marketing is confusing. Right. And that's something that that book talks about, too, is that um, the mar marketing is really tries to confuse the health space because that's how they make money, by and getting it, you to eat stuff that's bad for you. And it's also what we do with our system is we make it simple. I mean, that, that's kind of the goal of what that's we do. That's our have. job. That's, that's our what job we do. is to make it simple. Do this. Do that. Right. Real this simple. is this is marketing. This is science. Right. And so that's that's really what we do is kind of sort through it and help you figure out because so it doesn't have to be confusing because that is definitely something we hear from people when they come mm -hmm. to work with us. Is I'm just so confused. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I know. So it's I, not I, I know for the clients that we have is that when you sit there and tell them, okay, we want you to try to get this in your day, and we send them on our little app and tell them what to do, and they're like, fantastic, thank you. So that's good. Um, the next one is that it's complicated. Doesn't have to be complicated either. Um, and that's, you know, that's again, if you, if you know what you're supposed to do, you just do it. And that's what, for us, it's more about, you know, what nutrients do I want to get in today? Let me make sure I do that mm -hmm. rather than what do I feel like yeah. eating? It's yeah. never what do I feel yeah. like eating, What's which our is problem good. is we keep putting our plates are this high because we can, well, we got to have that nutrient. We got to have that nutrient. That's how come we look at our food. And prior to switching this way of eating, I was definitely one of those people with you said, well, what do you want to eat? I'd be like, eh, I don't want to eat anything. And part of that was because I felt like there were no healthy options. And so if I anything I chose, I felt like wasn't great for me. So I didn't want to have to choose anything. I don't have that problem. No, no, no. Now I'm like, get everything. all the things all out. We need a bigger on. island so there's more room for all the things. Right. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be confusing. Um, another lie is that it's boring. It's not boring. There's more than 20,000 edible plants on the planet. Trust me when I say right, there's a right. lot of things you can, eat, you can eat. And like I always say, if you, if you eat animal products, you have like six to eight choices of what you can eat. Mm -hmm. and you can season them all different ways. And you can put them in different types of dishes, but you really only have six to eight choices. Mm -hmm. With plants, you have 20,000 choices, and you can use the same seasonings. So right. you can get the same flavors. And different textures, and, different, and it's yeah. a lot of fun. So it's definitely not boring. There is a learning curve, and I did, I, you know, I did say that. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but... Once you get past that, super, super simple. Mm -hmm. And then the last one we talked about was that... Chastity, uh, what's he saying? Oh, Chastity, hey. Made the bread, good, and cookies. Yay. 
Yay, Tell nice. Tell them that's awesome. That happens. We're good. It's because they're yummy. Right. Yeah, the, that bread and those cookies are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, the last one, the last line that we mentioned is that uh, the way that you eat or your nutrition isn't important because your doctor doesn't talk about it. And we've talked about it before. We talked about it in detail yesterday. Doctors don't get nutrition training. And they're not going to tell you about nutrition because most of them, A, they don't know. They tell you about the marketing that they see. And B, they don't do it. I mean, when's the last time you actually saw a healthy doctor? We everybody, know one. Everybody out there who has a doctor that's out of shape and looks awful, raise their hand. See, everybody, look. <laughs> You're hysterical. Um, but we, we've definitely had doctors in the past that are out of shape. We both know mm. doctors now that are out of shape. Um, but we know doctors that are in lifestyle medicine, which are the doctors that look at nutrition and exercise and sleep and yeah, stress and strange, reduction. As you say, strangely, they look different. They, they actually do look, look healthy. They look healthy. Right. They're lean. They, you know, it's, and that's, you know, not, not fat shaming, just making a statement that mm -hmm. some doc, these doctors that are in, in the lifestyle medicine space look healthier than doctors who do traditional medicine right. that where pills and procedures are always the answer. Right. That's always the answer. So yeah. I, I had a doctor tell me uh, recently that her doctor had canceled her appointment and she's like, but that's okay because it gives me more time to lose weight. I'm thinking, I, you know, I, went to the, I went to my doctor yesterday. I weigh eight, within eight ounces of what I weighed last year when I was there. So that's pretty stable. I'd that's say. pretty stable. Yeah. So I got my blood work done. So I'll let you guys know when I get it back. I should get it back sometime next week. And she had an all time low for her um, static uh, blood heart rate. Heart rate. My heart rate. So my heart, I've always wanted my heart rate to be under 60 and it never has been. Now it's never been measured with me lying down. It's always been measured with me sitting up when they do my blood pressure. But yesterday um, the, the nurse measured it with me actually laying on the table. 58. I was like, yes! And of mm -hmm. course I did that and it popped up. But <laughs> it was 58 when she measured it when I was actually That counts. Yeah. So I was pretty happy about that. And because I have um, a thyroid condition, my heart rate tends to be higher than you'd expect for someone as athletic yeah. as I am. I mean, my all-time low, this is when I was bodybuilding for my static heart rate, was in the 30s. That's just not even fair. Yeah, well, that's what the doctor said. Not too. even fair. Yeah. Not even fair. Yeah. So um, this weekend I will be doing a cooking show in the Whole Food Muscle Club. Uh, Whole Food Muscle Group, sorry, right. in the group. Um, I don't know what I'm cooking yet. Um, I have a couple of things in mind. I might make um, barley, beans, and broccoli, which is a, a dish that we like to eat. I might make the cauliflower um, taco mix stuff. So I have a couple of recipes I'm kicking around. I don't know if I'll make it on Saturday or Sunday, but I definitely will um, be cooking in the Whole Food Muscle Group uh, at some point this weekend, and I will make something. Right. And of course, if you, if, because we don't know when, if you can't catch it live, it'll be in the group for the whole week, so it's free for anybody who wants to watch it for that week. For a week. And if you've missed any of the ones I've done in the past, they are... Um, they're on the Whole Food Muscle Club. They're Whole Food Muscle Club, right. which you can join by going to wholefoodmuscleclub.com. Imagine yeah. that. Anything else you want to tell them for the weekend? I think that's it. Hope you guys had fun for Halloween. I'm loving seeing all the pictures of everybody's Halloween costumes. Like they're always so much fun for me. So I hope you guys had fun and we're safe. And uh, yeah, all of that. I think that's what I got. I think we can go now. Okay. So oh, that, you can like and share. By the way, she's standing on something. I am standing on a mat. That's why I'm very tall today. Sorry. So with that, we'll say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you later.